Top 25 Ab Initio Interview Questions and Answers In the competitive world of data processing, Ab Initio has emerged as a powerful tool for ETL, extract, transform, load, tasks. This video presents a curated list of the top 25 interview questions you may encounter related to Ab Initio. Each question is designed to assess your understanding and practical knowledge of the platform. We will also provide concise answers to help you prepare effectively for your upcoming interviews. 1. What is Ab Initio and what are its key features? Ab Initio is a powerful data integration tool designed for high-performance ETL, extract, transform, load, processes. Its key features include a robust graphical user interface that simplifies the creation of data processing graphs, parallel processing capabilities for handling large datasets efficiently, and support for various data sources and formats. The tool also offers advanced data transformation functions, error handling, and logging mechanisms. Ab Initio's unique architecture enables users to build scalable and reusable components, which enhances productivity and reduces development time in complex data integration tasks. 2. How does Ab Initio differ from other ETL tools? Ab Initio differentiates itself from other ETL tools through its unique architecture and design philosophy. It employs a graph based approach, allowing users to visually design workflows with components that can be configured easily. Unlike traditional ETL tools, Ab Initio supports parallel processing at various levels, enhancing performance for large datasets. Its ability to manage metadata and provide a comprehensive environment for data management, including the integration of data quality and transformation processes, sets it apart. Additionally, it offers advanced recovery and error handling features, ensuring robustness in data processing tasks. 3. What are the main components of the Ab Initio Co. operating system? The Ab Initio Co. operating system consists of several key components that enable data processing and integration. These include 1. Graphical User Interface, GUI. This allows users to design and build data processing graphs visually. 2. The Co. operating system. It serves as the execution environment for Ab Initio applications, managing resources and processing tasks. 3. Data Manipulation Language, DML. DML defines the data structures and operations within Ab Initio, essential for data transformation. 4. Common Components. These are reusable components that standardize processes across different graphs. 5. Metadata Management. It manages data definitions and lineage, ensuring data integrity and quality throughout the processing lifecycle. 4. Explain the Ab Initio graph structure and its components. The Ab Initio graph structure consists of various components that work together to define data flows. At its core, a graph contains components such as input and output datasets, transformations, and processes. Each component represents a specific task within the data processing pipeline. Edges connect these components, indicating the flow of data between them. Graphs can be configured for parallel processing, enhancing performance. Metadata is also integral, providing context and information about data elements and their relationships. Through this structure, users can visualize and manage complex data workflows efficiently. 5. What are sandboxes in Ab Initio and how are they used? Sandboxes in Ab Initio are isolated environments designed for development and testing purposes. They allow developers to create, modify, and test graphs without affecting the production environment. Each sandbox can contain its own version of data, metadata, and graphs, enabling teams to experiment freely. When a graph is ready for deployment, it can be promoted from the sandbox to the production environment. This approach enhances collaboration among team members and reduces the risk of errors during the development process, ensuring higher quality deliverables. 6. What are the different types of parallelism in Ab Initio? Ab Initio supports several types of parallelism to enhance performance and efficiency. The primary types include 1. Data parallelism. This type divides data into segments processed simultaneously across multiple nodes. It leverages the power of parallel hardware, effectively speeding up data processing. 2. Component parallelism. Different components within an Ab Initio graph can execute concurrently, allowing for multiple operations to occur at once, enhancing graph execution speed. 3. Pipeline parallelism. This method allows for overlapping the execution of different stages of a process. While one component is reading data, another can be processing it, resulting in reduced latency. Each type of parallelism can be strategically applied depending on the specific requirements of a data processing task. Utilizing these types properly can lead to significant improvements in efficiency and speed. 7. How do you optimize an Ab Initio graph for performance? Optimizing an Ab Initio graph for performance involves several strategies. First, you can minimize data movement by using in-memory computations wherever possible. Second, ensure that you are using parallelism effectively, which includes configuring partitioning and parallel processing components. Third, utilize the proper data structures. For instance, using lookup files efficiently can reduce processing time. Regularly review and refactor the graph to eliminate redundant components and improve clarity. 
8. Explain the concept of partitioning in ab initio. Partitioning in ab initio refers to the process of dividing data into smaller, manageable segments that can be processed concurrently. This technique enhances performance by enabling parallel processing, allowing multiple data flows to occur simultaneously. Each partition can be processed independently, which helps in optimizing resource utilization and reducing execution time. Ab initio supports various partitioning methods, such as key-based, round-robin, and random partitioning. By strategically partitioning data, developers can ensure that large datasets are handled efficiently, leading to improved throughput and scalability in data processing tasks. 9. What is a lookup file and how is it used in ab initio? A lookup file in ab initio is a file that contains reference data used to enrich or validate input data during transformation processes. It acts as a source for additional information required by the main processing graph. Lookup files are typically used for tasks such as data validation, where input data can be cross-checked against known values, or for enrichment, where additional attributes from the lookup are merged with input records. The lookup component allows efficient access and retrieval of data, enabling faster processing times and ensuring accuracy in data integration tasks. 10. How do you handle errors and logging in ab initio? In ab initio, error handling and logging are crucial for maintaining data integrity and tracking issues. Errors can be managed using the error handling components like the error table or error handling graphs, which allow for capturing error records. Logging can be implemented through log files generated during graph execution, providing insights into process performance and errors. Additionally, the log component can be used to write custom messages to logs, helping in debugging and understanding the execution flow. Properly implemented error handling ensures that errors are captured, analyzed, and resolved effectively. 11. What are the different phases in an ab initio graph execution? Ab initio graph execution consists of several distinct phases, parsing, where the graph is analyzed to check for syntax errors, scheduling, which determines the order of operations and resource allocation, execution, during which data is processed according to the defined transformations, and cleanup, where temporary files and resources are released. Each phase is essential for ensuring that the graph runs efficiently and accurately. Proper management of these phases can help optimize performance and facilitate debugging. 12. How do you implement a slowly changing dimension, SCD, in ab initio? Implementing a slowly changing dimension, SCD, in ab initio involves several steps. First, identify the type of SCD required. Type 1, overwrite, type 2, historical tracking, or type 3, limited history. For type 1, simply update the existing records with new data. For type 2, maintain historical records by creating new entries with effective dates and flags to indicate active records. Utilize the join and lookup components to compare incoming data against existing dimension data. Ensure to manage primary keys and handle any duplicates. Validate data integrity by logging changes appropriately. 13. What is a DML and why is it important in ab initio? A DML, or data manipulation language, defines the structure of data within ab initio. It is essential as it outlines how data is represented, including its attributes and relationships. DML plays a crucial role in data processing enabling the design of data transformations and storage formats. By using DML, developers can ensure that data flows correctly through the graphs, making it easier to manage and manipulate data efficiently. It serves as the backbone for defining data structures, supporting seamless integration with various data sources and enhancing data integrity throughout the ETL process. 14. How does checkpointing work in ab initio? Checkpointing in ab initio allows the system to save the state of a graph at certain points during execution enabling recovery from failures without restarting the entire process. When a graph is executed, checkpoints are created at specified intervals, which store the current progress and data states. If a failure occurs, the graph can restart from the last successful checkpoint instead of beginning from the start, saving time and resources. Checkpointing is particularly useful for long-running processes, as it enhances reliability and minimizes data loss in case of interruptions. 15. What is a multi-file system, MFS, and how is it used? A multi-file system, MFS, in ab initio is a method for managing large volumes of data by dividing it into multiple files. Each file contains a portion of the data, allowing for parallel processing and efficient data management. MFS enables users to work with large datasets without overwhelming system resources. It facilitates easy access and manipulation of data through a unified interface, making data retrieval and processing faster. MFS is commonly used in scenarios requiring high-performance data processing, such as ETL operations, where data needs to be ingested from various sources and transformed efficiently. 16. Explain the role of the EME, Enterprise Meta, environment, in ab initio. The EME, Enterprise Meta, environment, serves as a central repository for managing metadata in ab initio. 
It facilitates the storage and retrieval of data definitions, transformations, and lineage information, ensuring consistency across projects. Users can access metadata to understand data sources and dependencies, making it easier to maintain and govern data processes. EME supports collaboration among teams by enabling version control and documentation of changes. Its robust features help organizations enforce data standards and improve data quality, leading to more efficient data integration and analytics workflows. 17. How do you debug a complex ab initio graph? Debugging a complex ab initio graph involves several strategies. Start by using the built-in debugging tools, such as the debug mode, which allows you to trace the flow of data through components. Utilize breakpoints to pause execution and inspect data at various stages. Check the logs for error messages and warnings that can guide you to issues. Analyzing the graph structure visually can also help identify problematic areas. Additionally, Test individual components in isolation to ensure they function correctly before integrating them into the larger graph. This systematic approach can help pinpoint errors effectively. 18. What are XFRs and how do they work in transformations? XFRs, or transformations, in ab initio are components that define how data is manipulated within a graph. They serve as the core of data processing by enabling various operations like filtering, joining, and aggregating data. Each XFR can be configured to perform specific functions on incoming data records, transforming them into a desired output format. XFRs can be connected to other components, allowing for complex data workflows. They can also reference reusable code, enhancing maintainability and efficiency in data processing tasks. 19. How do you implement incremental loading in ab initio? Incremental loading in ab initio can be implemented by identifying and processing only the new or changed records since the last load. This typically involves maintaining a log or timestamp of the last successful load. You can use a combination of the input file component to read data and the join component to compare new data against existing records. Additionally, the filter component can be used to separate new records from unchanged ones. Finally, load only the filtered new records into the target system, ensuring minimal data transfer and optimizing performance. 20. What are the best practices for ab initio code reusability? Ab initio code reusability can be enhanced by following several key practices. First, use reusable components such as graphs, datasets, and transformations that can be called from multiple graphs. Establish a standard naming convention for these components to ensure consistency and ease of use. Create libraries of common functions and transformations to streamline development. Document each component thoroughly, including its purpose and usage instructions. Regularly review and refactor code to eliminate redundancy and improve maintainability. Encouraging collaboration among team members can also lead to better design patterns and shared solutions, promoting a culture of reuse. 21. How would you process a large dataset with high volume in ab initio? To process a large dataset with high volume in ab initio, begin by leveraging parallelism features, which allow the simultaneous processing of data. Utilize partitioning to divide the dataset into manageable chunks, enabling efficient distribution across multiple nodes. Implement memory management techniques, ensuring that resources are optimized for performance. Employ components like the sort and join to handle data efficiently. Additionally, consider using incremental loading strategies to update data progressively, reducing the load on the system. Finally, monitor performance metrics to identify and resolve bottlenecks during execution. 22. Describe a situation where you used ab initio to solve a complex data integration problem. In a recent project, I faced a challenge integrating data from multiple sources, including flat files, databases, and APIs. The objective was to create a unified view of customer data for analytics. Using ab initio, I designed a graph to extract, transform, and load, ETL, the data efficiently. I utilized components like joins, lookups, and filters to cleanse and enrich the data. Partitioning allowed for parallel processing, significantly improving performance. The result was a seamless integration of diverse data, enabling stakeholders to make informed decisions based on accurate and timely insights. 23. How do you handle data quality issues in ab initio? Handling data quality issues in ab initio involves several strategies. First, establish data profiling to assess data quality metrics such as accuracy, completeness, and consistency. Utilize transformation components like reformat and filter to cleanse data by removing duplicates, correcting errors, or standardizing formats. Implementing data validation rules during data ingestion can help catch issues early. Additionally, use the data quality component for more advanced checks and incorporate logging mechanisms to track data quality problems. Continuous monitoring and iterative improvements are key for maintaining high data quality standards. 24. What are the security features available in ab initio? Ab initio offers several security features designed to protect sensitive data and ensure compliance. These include user authentication and authorization mechanisms, allowing administrators to control access levels for different users and roles. 
Data encryption is also supported, ensuring data is secure both at rest and in transit. Additionally, Ab Initio provides audit logging capabilities, which track user activities and changes made within the system. This helps in identifying unauthorized access or changes. Secure data transmission protocols can be implemented to further enhance data security across environments. 25. How do you migrate Ab Initio graphs from development to production? To migrate Ab Initio graphs from development to production, first, ensure that the graphs are thoroughly tested in the development environment. Use the co operating system's version control features to manage changes effectively. Export the graphs along with any associated metadata and configuration files. Next, import these components into the production environment, ensuring that all necessary resources, such as data files and lookup tables, are also available. After migration, conduct validation tests in production to confirm that the graphs function as expected without any issues. As we wrap up our exploration of the top 25 AB Initio interview questions and answers, we hope you found this information valuable in preparing for your next interview. Mastering these concepts will not only boost your confidence but also enhance your understanding of the AB Initio environment. If you enjoyed this content and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful videos. Your support helps us create more quality content for you. Thank you for watching, best of luck with your interview preparations.